Welcome to another great video. We're talking about things that change when you retire, right? After work, you're in retirement. We'll go through four big things. Not for everyone. Every retirement's a little unique, but things we see quite clearly working with many retirees. The first one, Kevin, and makes sense when you think about it, but your social group could change, right? Your work friends, you're not at work as often, so you have less interaction. You also have less in common with those folks because you're not in the office. You're not part of the office drama anymore. So that could be one of the things that change when you retire. Yeah, I mean, it, it's actually a big factor. You spend usually more time with the people you work with than you do with family and everything else, assuming yeah. an eight hour day and 40 hours a week, if that's the case that's going on. So these are people that you see and interact with every day and you know what's going on with them. That is, in essence, a large part of your social group. It may not be the activities outside, but you do deal with a lot of these people. Now, you're not there anymore. You're not going mm -hmm. in every day. You're not seeing this. You're not talking to these people probably on a regular basis. Your social structure is all going to change. What are you doing during the day? Are you seeing a new group of people? Are you creating yeah. it or are you not doing that? So that social group interaction, which has basically been a huge factor for you know humans in general, we like mm -hmm. to interact with everybody, is a huge dynamic to change. And it's something that's going to have to be adjusted to going forward. It, one of the four. We talked about that yeah. one. That's a big change, the social group. Another one, and this is one most folks don't think about, but it would be your access to debt. Hopefully, you don't need a lot of debt in retirement. No. We've done videos on this, whether or not you have to be debt-free when you retire, so we can link to those videos. But the concept here, of course, you'll still have credit cards. Maybe you still have assets like a house that you can use against a, a loan, but you likely won't have a steady income because you're not working. And banks, credit unions, they love that steady income. They want to see someone with a regular, consistent paycheck, and then they can give that person a loan and they'll have pretty good confidence it'll get repaid. So if you don't have that steady income, your access to debt could be limited. So that could be one of the things that'll change in retirement. Yeah. And I mean, that's a big factor to deal with, right? Because I mean, it's not necessary that you will, but maybe something comes mm -hmm. up that you want to buy. And if you don't have that aspect of a steady income check or a paycheck coming through, then it's going to be harder to get those sort of scenarios. I mean, opening things like a home equity line of credit may be your only option. And all of a sudden yeah. now you're borrowing against that house. And again, that's the asset that you're dealing with in that point. But again, most people do not look at it that way and they don't realize that, hey, maybe I do need something down the road. But have I planned for that? And that's a big factor to even consider before you get into the retirement phase. Do I think I'm going to need anything beyond what my numbers are? And you're right. Access to credit is going to be a factor. Now, on this one or any of the other ones, if you have questions dealing with this sort of topic, by all means, where do you go? We go to chatwithclintonandkevin.com. We'll be able to hopefully answer these questions for you, help you with any of the other <laughs> stuff that we've dealt with or any of the videos that we've taken beforehand. But that gives us sort of a clear scenario of Getting in touch with us will be able to help with that. But that's two that we've got so far, Clint. What else do we have to deal with when it comes to the retirement scenario? Well, we promised four, right? So we may as yes. well get through all four. Let's get to number three. And this one has to do with perspective. And I get it. We work for many years. Or you're putting money aside. You're building habits. And then in retirement, you're suddenly changing those habits and that routine. Mm -hmm. So it can be a little tricky. One area you could see this is how your perspective of your investments, of your finances could change. So for years, you're putting money aside, you're seeing some progress every year might not be perfect, but overall, you're seeing the account values go up, right? You're adding to them, investments are growing, you're adding to your pension through work, so you're seeing that increase in overall wealth. And then in mm -hmm. retirement, you're starting to withdraw the money, which is whole reason for the plan, right? That's the why the reason you put it aside yeah. is so you could spend it in retirement, but that will change the overall perspective, right? If you're used to seeing everything go up years after years and suddenly now you're withdrawing the money, that balance could start to decline. Not maybe the investments are doing perfectly fine, but you're actually withdrawing more than the interest. So you're seeing the drop. And that very well could be part of the plan and be perfectly okay, but very tough to handle if you're used to the other perspective. That shift in perspective can create some mixed emotions and that can be tough to handle. So that's one of the things that can change in retirement. Yeah, that perception scenario is huge, no matter how anybody wants to look at it. When you're working, that number's constantly going up if you're putting yeah. money away. And that's always a positive. And people have a really hard time watching that number ever come down. Regardless of the fact that you may be making money off it, as you said, Watching it come down is not something people can do. And as a result, what you find is people may cut back on things specifically so they don't see that number come down. So you may not be dealing with it. When you're doing the plan, it can be all, yeah, you know what? I don't have a problem spending it all and making sure none of it's away. But the actual physical ability to do that is very hard for people. So you've got to realize that, no, these numbers may not stay as high. And yes, this was the plan when you originally set it up. You do want to withdraw money from it. 
And that's that's a big factor that really has to be looked at. And it's hard to do. But, you know, if you plan for it, it's something that you can deal with. Yeah. And that's really the, the, the reason we're driving at here is you don't want that perception, that mixed emotion to alter your behavior. Mm -hmm. your, your, maybe your goal is to spend four or $5,000 a month. You enjoyed that lifestyle, but now you cut back just because you don't like seeing the portfolio balance go down. Right. Well, maybe if you're prepared, knowing this is going to happen, it's part of the plan you can adjust so you can continue to enjoy that lifestyle without cutting back. So it's it, making sure you're aware of all these details. And this is kind of driving to our fourth point here. Uh, things that can change in retirement, the loss of identity yep. and routine. This is kind of a two in one identity and routine, but they very much <laughs> are linked, right? The, the work routine, you're going to the office, getting those habits, and that could very much form part of your identity. I'll pull up a bit of research here. So that'll kind of dovetail with what we're talking about. Uh, you have uh, Ashley, who is a, a sociologist in the, the 60s and 70s in the US, came up with his ad adjustment model. You can see the six stages there, fairly self explanatory, but the idea is you adjust to a new routine. Uh, a new role in retirement, and that takes a process. It goes through a couple of steps and then reads and retran. That's where we're actually going to spend a little more time. They did a study a few years back. They followed people around, Kevin. They actually followed them around for the first two <laughs> years of retirement and got regular updates on their well-being and uh, their positive attitudes towards retirement, how that shifted during the first two years. And what they found actually lined up pretty well with Ashley's model. Now, Reed Sumitran had their own model. It was only five steps, not six yep. steps, but I'll show you the data here. And it, it kind of gets to the idea of the initial phase where both those lines going up, this is positive attitudes towards retirement. You have men and women, they're the two different lines. They both kind of peak six months after retirement. We'll call that the honeymoon phase, the permanent vacation phase. And the reality sets yeah. in, is, hey, maybe this isn't permanent vacation. You get some disenchantment and then eventually a reorientation. You kind of get used to your new role, your new identity, you get used to that new routine and things bounce back. Not to the prior peak, because maybe that peak was a little too high to begin with, but you find that new routine. Would this make sense for you? Yeah, I mean, let, let's face facts. All I ever hear from everybody or when we talk to people, the retirement, I can't wait to get to retirement. I, mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be a nice vacation. I'm going to be able to do the things I want to do. And I don't have to worry about that work aspect anymore. And that does that lasts for that yeah. nice six months. But after that time frame, it's, you know, how long does everybody actually want a permanent vacation? Maybe, you know, if you had three or four weeks in a row, that's great. You have six months now. This is wonderful. But what am I doing now? Because typically yeah. you'll go back to work and everything and you don't have that aspect anymore. So now, do you have a plan when you're going forward? And if you don't have that plan, that's when it's going to set in going, well, now what am I going to do with myself? Uh, I, I'm bored. I need to do this. So I've got to start looking for volunteering activities. Or do I look after the grandkids? Do I find something else part-time that I want to do? That's mm -hmm. the figuring outside. And then, of course, after you do get to that routine, as you showed, that's when things start to get into the, okay, this is who I am. It's sort of your identity. Yeah. I'm work person now. Now I'm not work person. Or I was dad when the kids were young, and now I'm still dad, but it's in a different phase as I get older. So all these things are, are changing. Your routine, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. it's no longer. I go to work every day. I've got to find something else to do. And I, again, that was the identity I had for the longest time. So that's where it kicks in. That leads us to our all-encompassing one uh, line that we have to deal with, Clint. And, and what is that that we tell everybody? Uh, it's always to have a plan. You, you want to have a financial plan. Uh, and, and this can all come through the planning process, right? You're asking the questions, what does retirement mean for me? You, you go through the financial portion of that, and that all kind of gets fleshed out through the financial plan. So these four big changes, well, hopefully you can spend some time thinking about them prior to retirement. And part of the planning process can help you address them. We went through four things that could change in retirement. So that can give you a bit of a tip. If you like this video, I'm sure you'll like our other video. It's probably floating over Kevin right now. Four questions you must answer before retirement. Click on that one. We'll see you there. Take care, everybody.